I know it seems I'm covering a lot of learning moments here right at the very beginning of the course, but there's a reason for that. One of the things that uh, is required in uh, both projects is a good system for managing lookup values, right? And I kind of wanted to teach you those other things before teaching you this. So don't worry, you won't be getting these many lessons. Usually it's about one a week <laughs> for the learning moments. But uh, you just have a head start on things here. This is all that's happening right now. So this third one is kind of a key as a requirement in the projects. And that is uh, a nice and elegant way to manage all the lookup values. What is a lookup? What am I talking about? Well, basically those foreign keys is what they often are. So it could be anything that normally would go in a drop-down list, right? Drop-down lists of provinces, cities, countries, um, medical conditions, you know, you name it pretty much, right? Anything you pick out of a list for the most part. Simple things, often those lists, the data just has two things, the actual text you would display and the, the primary key that goes along with it, right? Now, in a lot of the real-world applications I've worked on, it's actually, I've seen 30, even 40 or more lookup values in a large application. But typically, you're going to have at least a half dozen or so, if not, you know, uh, even more than that, right? So the trouble with MVC, again, that siloed approach that people sometimes complain about is that, you know, a controller is dedicated on maintaining one entity. So if the entity is a tiny little wee entity, like a list of cities, right? Uh, then that just seems like overkill. You have all the index just listing all these names of cities and then you go to details. Well, there's nothing else there but the name of the city, right? Edit, you know, create and delete. It's all very simple. It's all very uh, micromanaging almost it seems. And it seems a bit tedious when you have a whole bunch of them like that, right? So one of the things that's often good to do is to bring all the lookups or at least many of them as most of them that are required into a single index, right? Where it's easy to access them. Uh, there's different approaches and I'll, I'll, I'll touch on more than one approach to do this before the end of the course. But this is kind of the one that builds on what we were just doing, utilizing bootstrap tabs, partial views and a little bit of jQuery. So I kind of did that in order to show you this because we're building on top of the same approach, right? Uh, so it'll be a similar technique. Uh, this way we're as well avoiding downloading data until or unless we actually need it, right? And away we go. So I've got my copy paste file and uh, you can open yours as well, but just have a quick look here. I kind of have that same preamble at the top and uh, feel free to use it and follow along. So I've downloaded the latest and greatest uh, version. So let me just remind you where you find those again. Under learning moments, you come down to resources, examples, and solutions. These are the ones that I started with. These are the ones from the end of the last term. And we've been building up, you can see here, uh, new versions as we add more and more features. So the 2.2, that's the one that I'm starting with right now. And we're going to add, see, I've already got this one up, the one with managing lookup values. So don't cheat, try and do it on your own. But anyway, the solution is there. All right, so let me just minimize this. We have Visual Studio open, that 2.2 version. And uh, I'll just make sure I have my right notepad. Uh, bu 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 yeah. Um, no, that's not the right one. Hang on. Okay. Code for many lookups using tabs, right? So I'm going to make a new controller, just be an empty controller. I'm just going to call it lookups. Be empty. Lookups, get rid of that one at the back end. Because it's uh, empty, it's a little bit different. Okay, lookups controller. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to, I could steal it from any of the others, but uh, to save me a bit of time, I have the code here. Just go to any of them and grab the uh, constructor, right, on how to get uh, your context in place. So my medical office context, of course, I have to add the namespace for the data namespace, and there we go, right? So I, we'll have our read-only context available in the lookups controller. We pass in the context, and that's how it gets in place. And there's our index. All right. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three partial view results. Uh, truth is, of course, right now we technically have four things you would typically call lookups, right? All the specialties for the doctor, the reasons for appointments, our conditions, you know, those medical conditions in our history, and also the medical trials. I'm going to skip the medical trials, though. I'll just mention that because, remember, we did all that work last term in terms of adding uh, email functionality so we could select everybody in a given medical trial and send out a group email to all of them. So I don't want to mess with that right now. So I'm leaving that out at this point, and we're just going to do these three conditions, specialties, and appointment reasons. Oh, look at that. We have to add a using. Uh, ASP.NET Core, MVC Rendering, to have our select list. All right. So notice on these ones, these partial views aren't, technically speaking, they don't have a model, right? So they're not strongly typed. In each case, we're just putting data into a, uh, a select list because we're technically going to just use a drop-down list, even though it won't look like it because we're going to set a size greater than one. But we don't want it to be multi-select. So a drop-down list is fine with a simple select list uh, because you really, if we're going to edit one or delete one, we don't want to be able to select more than one, right? So we just build up our, our select list here for conditions, sorting by condition name, specialty, sorting by specialty name, appointment reasons, sorting by reason name, right? So we just add those to view data and return the partial views themselves. So I'll have to make the partial views next. Okay, so these are all related to lookups. So I don't actually have, if you look carefully, <laughs> no pun intended, you won't see a lookups folder here yet because of how I created the controller. But if I come up here to index, right click and say add view, just even a empty view is fine. Just simply calling it index, okay? This will, in the views folder, create lookups and there's my index. Now, as I said, it's pretty well empty, but that's okay. We'll fix that. But it gives me the right folder here that I can now create my own partial views to correspond to those three partial view result actions, right? Okay, so I'll pick one, any one, doesn't matter. I'm able to start with appointment reasons. That's the first one in my list here. So I'll right click, we'll add that view. Again, just an empty view. Appointment reasons. I might as well get all three of them in place and then I'll worry about getting the code in place. Okay, so conditions. Don't forget the underscore that goes at the beginning of the name because partial views, that's our naming convention. And last but not least is our specialties. Specialities, if you like to pronounce it that way. Okay, so here's each one. So uh, maybe I'll take them one at a time here. So for appointment reasons, right, it's just a snippet of HTML. Again, there's no model, right? But we do make use of that select list, right? We're gonna have a drop-down list here. Okay, notice we're setting the size to six, so it'll be a little bit bigger. You can change that as you require, right? And I'm also using a Bootstrap card here, you'll notice, right? Cards are a nice feature in Bootstrap because they have headers and footers, and it's a nice way to kind of uh, represent a nugget of information. Uh, I especially like them because of the footers, a great spot to put our links for various things like, uh, you know, create, edit, delete, and so on, right? And the header is a nice spot to put a nice big uh, header and so on and so forth as well. Right, and in the card body is where we'll have our control here, where we can scroll up and down and grab the different uh, elements themselves. Okay, just before I leave this one, I guess I should talk about these links. So notice that we're going to go back to the existing controllers, appointment reasons, the create, edit, delete, and so on, right? The only thing is, uh, normally we would supply that route value, but we don't know which option they're going to pick in the drop down list yet so we're going to be adding some code to the bottom of the index page okay that will allow us once we select something in the drop down list when we click these links okay that's why i'm going to grab the click event of everything in this class notice we don't have to worry about create because we don't pass an id for create right but for edit and delete we have to pass the id of the record to uh, work with so we're going to interrupt the process, the flow, by grabbing the click event of anything with this class. And then we can manually find out 
okay, what's the ID of the uh, item selected in the list? And then pass that as a parameter, right? When, when we call the controller's action. So that's what's going on in each of these. So let me just get the other ones in place. There we go. Okay. So you see the same thing each one. So we're going to use the existing controllers for actually doing all the work of inserting, updating, deleting. The specialties controller, the conditions controller, and the appointment reasons controller, right? Okay. So let's go back to the index view. Obviously, we need something in here, okay? So I've laid it out in my copy-paste file. And it's almost as much JavaScript code as it is HTML. But let's bring it in and we'll just quickly go through it. Okay. All right. So look up index. Okay. Look up value. So again, we're using our bootstrap tabs, right? Here are nav tabs. We have our tab list, this unordered list defined. So I have a default panel. Okay, now it's pretty small. There's no actual label even in the tab at the top, so it doesn't take up much room. There's just a, a single space there. And then we have one each for the specialties, the conditions, and the appointment reasons, right? Now, of course, these hrefs point to the actual panels down here, right? So my default panel just says, select the look of value to maintain uh, from the tabs, right? Okay, and then we have our three tab panels for specialties, conditions, and appointment reasons. So, as I said, quite similar to what we did in our last lesson, right? Uh, the main difference is the amount of script and what we have to do, because on these tabs, we're just going to have a, a single select dropdown, even though it looks like a list control, where we can choose an item to edit or delete or whatever. And then we need to be able to find out which one it is. So when you click the link, we can grab that information and pass it along. So let's talk about, about the script here. Well, this should look familiar. This is pretty much kind of what we did before. I have my active tab, right? So if it, depending on which panel it is, okay, we can load the correct um, partial view, right? We'll call these actions inside of the controller, the lookups controller, and it will return the appropriate partial view with the appropriate uh, select list to go along with it. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. All right, uh, this just sets the uh, active tab based on which link we clicked, right? Okay, now down here, this one is more fun. So here's our tab content. So if we click, and it happens to be a link click, right? So we've clicked, see, the thing is that button will be inside of a tab content. So it's kind of like uh, there's a bubbling effect. The event happens, sure, on the link, but because the link lives inside of a tab, we have to kind of look for that click event on the tab and then look to see, well, hey, did that happen to be uh, an object of class link click, right? And then, of course, we prevent default, okay? We grab the address that we were trying to go to. I split it a little bit, right? And we just grab the first, basically, part of it. And then I go into my list and grab the ID, right? We take the value of that. Okay, and that gives us the actual primary key value of the option that was selected in the list. And then we just uh, I have here, in case there was a problem, we have no value selected, right? If you try to edit something, you don't have something selected to edit, we have to give that. Otherwise, we just use this little bit of code, window location.href is the address, and then we can just add on the actual ID, right? And that should work. So it should give us basically a call to that action in the appropriate controller with the ID of the selected item in our list. This last bit of code, this is just, it made sense to me. I first built this without it, but you know, if you go off and you say you're going to, uh, you've got all these different lookups, so you're working with a given condition that you want to edit the name of, well, when you come back to the lookups controller, you know, you want to be able to see the data you were just working on. That's a standard aspect of UI design is when you've edited a record, you should be able to see the result of your work on the screen right away. So I thought, wouldn't it be nice if we've got all these different tabs, instead of always going back to the default and making the user click on the appropriate tab, what I've done here is we're going to be able to pass the name of the tab, right? And we can trigger the click event. 
Okay, notice that this has got a set timeout function. So we actually wait 10 milliseconds or whatever, and then we wait that length of time. And then after the page is loaded and ready, we give it that little bit of a pause, but you know, the eye could never pick it up and we trigger the click event of the specified tab. So all we have to do is put the name of the tab we want in view data, right, as the tab. And that way we can, see we can't do it ahead of time because it happen, has to happen on the client but this is a way to get around that limitation. So on the client, then we load the page in code, we click the appropriate tab. And then that way, if I'm coming, as I said, say from conditions, editing a condition, I can make sure that's the tab that gets uh, selected, right? Okay, so to go along with that, let's go back to our controller for a second. This index obviously needs a little bit more. We don't just want to return the index view. We need to do a bit of extra effort in order to be able to t pass the correct tab, right? Okay, so let me just put my code in place here. Um, I'm going to add a string parameter in here as well. So I might as well just replace it all. Okay, so we've added a string just for tab, the name of the tab. So as I say here, note, select the tab you want to load by passing in the ID of the tab, right? Uh, and away we go. So we pass that in when we call the index. Now, if we don't, then you know it won't change it, right? That won't be a problem. It would go back to the default if we don't specify the name of a, a different tab. But we just add that to view data, and then on the client side, it simulates clicking that particular tab when the page after the page loads. Okay, all right. So that now the page should work. But we don't have. Well, let's run it. Go ahead. Yeah, why not? It'll work, but we can't actually edit. Uh, or delete or work with any of the data yet, okay? Oh, I didn't add my uh, <laughs> my nav link, so it'd be a bit of a pain. I don't have any security on it yet either, so I don't have to worry about logging in. I can just say lookups. Okay, so here we are. So I'm on the default tab. Select the lookup from that so I can click specialties. And there we go. So here's the bootstrap card, right? It makes a nice little presentation. There's the card there. And then here is the body of the card where we have our drop down list. Okay. And I've set it to a height of six. So yeah, we can scroll up and down. Notice it's not multi select though. If you pick one and hold control, right? You can only ever have one selected at a time. But we can go to each one, medical conditions, reason for appointments. And you know, if you get too many here, like it'll actually start wrapping around. Uh, but I often suggest. You know, you can just create more of these, you know, possibly if, if that becomes a problem, if you have too many lookups to worry about at once. But you can see it's fully functioning, going and getting it. And just as I said, as I sh we showed with the last lesson as well, if somebody were to be adding a new condition while I'm working here, or well, the next time I come back, it'll be in the list or if they've made an edit change and so on, because it does actually refresh completely every time we go from one tab to the next. All right, now how about this business of, say I want to uh, come in here and create a new one or select one and then edit it, right? Well, we have everything working in here. Like if I notice the at the bottom, it says uh, condition slash edit, but there's no number yet, okay? Now if I click edit, see, it actually did work. Condition slash edit slash two. Huh, okay, so it has actually, it went to the conditions controller, passed the ID for heart attack, Trouble is, if I were to actually make a change here, uh, D, 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 okay, then it goes back to the normal index for conditions. So that's the main thing we have left to do is we want to change the navigation because I really want to go back to, right, my, <laughs> my uh, lookup values controller, right? And there we go. So I see that the D, D, D is now there. Okay. So that's what we need to do. So that's really the only thing left is to fix the navigation back and forth between the different pages. But it's really already working and doing what it needs to do. Okay, so let's uh, carry on then. Uh, if you're looking at the copy paste file, uh, notice I mentioned we're gonna do conditions and specialties first. That's because, uh, 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 mud on my face, I, bad boy, I never did get around to at least even doing the basic changes, right? This appointment reasons controller has not been touched at all. Bad David, right? So in other words, coming down here, there's no try catches even. And edit doesn't use try update model. So that's why I said, we'll leave this one to the end. And uh, I'm just, wow, 
maybe I'll do it now. Why not? See, I'll make a liar of myself. So you have to go to the very bottom of the uh, copy paste file. That's where I have just a new version of the whole controller because I had to make incremental little changes here and there. You know, rather than take a chance on messing it up, I've just basically got a new version of the controller with the changes we have to do. So let me just get that in place. Um, so don't remove the namespace, but basically everything inside it, I just have the updated version. I can do this now and then we'll just talk about the changes that were actually required for uh, the navigation for our new lookup controller, right? So the main thing is here, the index, okay? We return not to anything else, we go back to, right? So if this is where they uh, uh, try to come to this index, we say, no, 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 that's no good. We don't wanna go to this index anymore. We wanna go to the index of the lookups controller. Right, and here we can pass in the tab. Right, here's our parameter for tab, and this is the name of the tab that we want open when we go back to the lookups controller. So you'll see that line of code is used throughout. So here, down in the create post, after we finish saving changes, we do the same thing: redirect to action index of lookups, going to the app reasons tab. Right. So that was the main change we really had to do, but I had to fix all the other. <laughs> fact that I hadn't done try update model and so on. So again, after saving changes from an edit, go back to the index of lookups and the app reason tab, right? Same thing after delete, okay? But of course we do need to worry about the foreign key constraint and so on. So that's this one needed that probably the most work of all of them. Once more, redirect back to lookups. So technically we won't even be using the index anymore of the separate controllers, right? for each individual and we'll always go back to the lookup instead. So that has all of it in place. We'll have to manually do the others though. Okay, so that's not a bad thing. Let's go to uh, conditions. So I'll bring up the conditions controller. Okay, so it gives me a chance to talk about what we would do here. So I will do this a step at a time. So it's gonna be a return, redirect to action, right? But not only that, right now it's set up asynchronous because this is a two list. Well, there's no more two list async. So watch what happens as I put this in. And of course I have to replace this with the name of the controller, which is conditions. Right? It's not happy, okay? Cause it's async and la 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 lacks it. So I can let it fix it for me, but really it's a matter of taking out, it's no longer going to be an async task. It's just a plain old action result, okay? I action result, all right? So this is what we need. And then I can just put this line of code in each of the post events, okay, for create. Here's our create post. So we do our return, redirect to action. No, not here. We want to go to our lookups, okay? Go into the conditions tab of the index. Same thing for the edit post. So we're in the edit post here, right? So here, we'll just change the redirect after we successfully save changes to go back to our lookups. And last but not least, in delete, confirmed, we do it here. So that's the only real change in the controllers, okay? The other one was worse because I had to actually <laughs> uh, replace the whole thing. Well, at least fix up all the try catches and so on, so. I, oh, this is a good one to talk about. Remember, I had you do this, okay, on the specialties, because we had quite a few. I had you add paging. Well, that's good. I mean, that was a nice exercise. I'm glad we did it. But you know what? We aren't going to even see or use this index page anymore, right? So really, there's no point in having that. So I'm going to be really lazy. I'm going to take out all of this because we don't worry about any of that sorting business or paging business anymore. And we'll just replace the index. Oh, it's not conditions, it's specialties. And it's the specialties tab is what we want to go to, right? Okay, so again, I'll just take this one return, our redirect, come down to the post for create. Come down to the post for edit. Last but not least, the post for delete. Okay, 
So that just fixes that navigation issue that after making a create, update, or delete action, right, we want to go back to the lookups controller, even though we're using the individual specialties, conditions, whatever, controllers for each one. Now, that's good, but what about the views? Well, on each view, there's one of those darn back to list links, right? So that's something else we have to deal with. So uh, we have to go through each view and then uh, fix that link itself. So let me just, uh, maybe I'll start with condition. Coming down to views. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll start with appointment reasons. That's first alphabetically, right? So near the bottom here is this back to list, okay? But we want to change that because we want to make sure that we go actually to the index of the lookups controller, okay? And I'm in, uh, which one I'm in? I'm in appointment, so I've got the wrong. It should be APP reason, <laughs> R-E-A-S-O-N, right? There we go. And uh, that will work for the back to list there. Oh, I gotta make sure R E A S O N S appointment reasons. Okay. Woo. See, that's how you introduce bugs. And I've got to do that on each of these. Okay. Delete has one. I don't have to worry about the index because remember, we're actually never going to see the indexes anymore. So we could take them out, but I'm not going to worry about that kind of cleanup at the moment. And edit. Our back to list. Uh, there we go. So that's fine here. I'm just going to do the exact same thing in conditions. I won't make you watch me do it all, though. Um, just fix this. This will be conditions. All right. Notice that says back to lookup list, which is true for all of them. Okay. All right. I'll pause the video. Oh, there we go. So four for each one. That's 12 in total of these links. I just had to then fix up and replace. And uh, that's it. We're almost done. The only thing left really is our navigation. Okay. We know that on layout, right, we have our main nav links. And uh, so right now, so we have reasons for appointments, medical condition specialties. If we included medical trials, we could do all four. But, you know, basically, I'm just going to delete. I can only use one here. And all I really have to do is change it to the control where is lookups. Okay, index and maintain lookup values. <laughs> maintain M-A- I N T. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, I didn't talk about it, but obviously we need to get the appropriate uh, authorized anna annotations on. But uh, in my code I've posted, I've done that. In fact, I either added it to the, uh, some controllers that didn't have an authorized uh, annotation on them at all. So feel free to have a look at that in the posted code, but I'm not going to make you watch me do that kind of thing right now. So here we are. Let's run her again. Okay, so now we just have one here, maintain look of values. So let's, you know, instead of having three or four here, I can just do the one. I can choose specialties, for example. Oh, medical conditions. Uh, oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> and reasons for appointment. I was thinking medical trials. I had a brain fart there. So obviously we need to fix that so I can edit. That was silly. Whoever did that, right? When I save, notice we came back, there was a, infinitesimal small delay as we clicked then the medical conditions tab and it refreshed and we can see that we've updated that particular record right COVID-19 oh you know what else I forgot to do just now actually I already fixed it in my uh, uh, code I put up I don't have on the delete view the uh, um, validation summary right okay let me fix that because that's just wrong I can't leave it like that even temporarily. Okay, so uh, I should do that in each of these, come to think of it. Ah, I'm not sure if I did in all of them. 
Okay, hang on. Okay, so it was only the appointment reasons. I was missing the validation summary, right? Uh, because, of course, remember that this is the one that is, well, the controller I had never touched, so I'd never touched the views as well. Okay, that's better now. Uh, let me just run it once more. I just wanted to show you that, uh, you know, the, all the built-in uh, system for referential integrity constraints and a validation error message, everything still works exactly as we would expect it, right? So if I come in here, select something I know is being used, select delete, go to delete it. Oh, I guess in my sample data, nobody was using COVID-19. <laughs> uh, bad, David. Okay. Oh, here, I'll try this one. I know Fred Flintstone has this. There we go. Unable to delete reason for appointment. Okay. So we can go back to the lookup list. But remember, we changed this. Okay. And even passes the name of the tab. Right. Uh, you know, one thing I just noticed, though, uh, I don't like is that. Uh, oh, well, there you go. There's my little JavaScript. I don't have anything selected. That doesn't look right. Got to fix that on the edit page. Okay. And uh, so on and so forth. Probably the same thing on create. Yeah. Ugh. God. Terrible. David, what are you thinking? Oh, got to pick one. Yeah. APPT reason. I uh, got to fix that on all those views. Anyway, that's a side point. Um, you can see that everything else is working fine. Right. We're good here. And we go back and we get the tab that we want. So that's one of the ways that you can get around this uh, frustration of having to go to an entire different menu option. Uh, the nice thing as well, we're only pulling in data that we need. Okay, so we're cutting down the amount of information flow, both in the database and uh, between the web server and the client, potentially at least. So there, we'll look at other ways to do this to bring lookup values all into one view. But this is a nice way that builds on what we did earlier on. All right, I'm just going to fix uh, fix this business. Hate that appointment reason. Ugh.